Hey everybody, this is Brian, and welcome to the 24th Java video. Had a request from HardHitto1000 who wants to see linked lists or trees in Java. Well, to understand linked lists and trees, um, you first have to kind of go back and do a little bit of research here. You have to understand what an interface is, and you have to understand what generics are. So first thing, what is an interface? An interface is a contract between two objects. For example, think of your car key if you have a vehicle or if you don't have a vehicle, your bus pass. That allows you to turn that vehicle on if you have a car or to get in the bus. It's a contract saying you have to have a certain thing in order to do something else. So if you're going to implement a list, you have to adhere to the list interface. And you can look that up online. Um, there's a lot of verbiage out here, but it says here's the things that must be in there, like add, add all, clear, contains, equals, etc., etc., etc. Looks like a lot, and it is, but the developers have already done this for you. For example, the array list is the imp an implementation of a list interface. It's a very simple implementation. Now, what's the difference between a list and an array? Well, an array, if you remember right, you have to define an upper limit. A list, you don't have to do that. You can just keep adding and adding to your heart's content. Makes it much simpler to work with. Now, um, a lot of college classes and online training make these uh, classes much more difficult than I believe they really need to be so we're gonna go through these really quickly I think you're smart enough to really catch on so bear with me let's just jump right in alright the first thing we need to do is go import the Java dot util namespace and uh, if you want to kind of explore the namespace you actually see that here's the array list and then there is a whole slew of other classes in here. You'll get really, really familiar with the util namespace, but for now we're just going to use the array list. And then the second thing you want to do is actually let's make an array list. So let's go array list. And when you select that from IntelliSense, you notice you get this bracket e bracket. What in the world is that? Well that's the second thing you need to understand. It's called a generic. Well, a generic, in case you're scratching your head wondering what it is, is simply defining a type. For example, if we said this array list can take strings, we'd have to make an array string list, and then what if I wanted to do integers? You'd have to make an array int list, and what if I made a class called dog? You'd have to make an array dog list, and on and on and on. It gets a huge headache. So what they did is they came up with the concept of generics, which means when you create an array list, or something that uses the list interface, you have to define the type that it's going to use. So we're creating an array list. We're specifying the type. This is called a generic whenever you see these brackets. And here's the name. We're going to call it nums. And equal new array list. And you have to also enter the brackets at the end because this is the default constructor. Remember our conversation on classes. Uh, it looks kind of funny that you have to declare the type twice, and it is kind of funny. There's a whole big conversation we could get into about typecast and all that, but we're not going to do it. We're going to keep it very simple for this tutorial. Once again, you're making an array list, which follows the list interface, which takes a generic, and we're saying the generic is going to be string. So basically what we're saying is we have an array list of strings called num. Let's just copy that variable and now we have nums. So the second thing we need to do is add items to it. So we'll say add string. So we can add the word hello. Now you might be wondering, I'm still kind of fuzzy on this whole generics thing. Show me what you mean. So let's do that. So actually plug in the integer type and you notice how add suddenly starts complaining e this method add integer notice how it suddenly wants an integer instead of a string now you really see the power of the list interface we'll just say 33 that's how generics work you can use the same class with different types of data so let's flip back to strings just because I like working with strings let's copy this paste it here and see now once again add is complaining well it takes a string not an integer so let's actually add the word one 
and through the magic of copy and paste, my favorite thing in the whole world, we're going to add a couple of these and we'll say uh, 2 and 3. So that's it. That's how you add them. Now how do you print these out? Well, there's a real simple way. You can go system.print Oops, I'm sorry. I'm used to another language here. System out dot print. Uh, let's say print line. And you can actually just print the variable out. And let's run this and see what happens. You notice how in brackets it says one, two, three. Well, what if you want to access the individual elements here? Let's do that. We'll say four. And we're going to use the for each construct because it's very easy to work with. And if you don't know what that is, that is the for each. Um, basically, you're saying for each string in nums. That's what this little semicolon means. And you're just going to loop through here. We're going to say int i equal nums dot index of. And what we're going to do is we're going to get the index of that variable, s. So we're going to say for each string in nums, one, two, three. We're going to loop through, and we're going to get the index. What's the index? The index is the position within this list. It's all going to become very clear really fast here. System dot out dot print line. Whoops. And we are just going to say i equals. And we just want to print out the s. So what we want to do is we want to see the index and then just an equal sign so we know where we're at and then the s variable which is going to be the actual string. Save your work. Let's run it. Sure enough, 0 equal 1, 1 equal 2, 2 equal 3. Now, list interface is 0 based, just like an array that you're used to. And that's how easy it is. Now, if you want to remove things, you can actually just say, you know, nums dot whoops. Oh, come on. There we go. IntelliSense is screwing around on me. You can uh, remove, and you see this int index? Well, it's looking for the position you want to remove. So let's remove one, which is actually the second position. Remember, this is zero based. So let's just put some comments in here. Zero, one, and two. So we're going to remove one, which is actually this guy right here, because this is in the one position. So when we run this, see how it goes zero, one, one, three, we removed the one position. Pretty simple. I know it's a little confusing first walking into it. I recommend you practice a few times and really get used to interfaces and generics because they are very popular not just in Java but in other languages as well such as Visual Basic, C Sharp, and C++ and a few others that I won't name. All right, this is Brian. Thank you for watching. I hope you found this video educational and entertaining and stay tuned for more.